Broadcasting from Baltimore, Maryland, this is 5 by 3 Radio, where strength is for everyone. I'm your host, Emily Sokolinski, owner of 5 by 3 Training, a strength and conditioning gym in Baltimore, along with my co-host, Rebecca Fishburne, founder of Cornerstone Strength Maryland. Each week, Rebecca and I will discuss the ins and outs of strength training, why there is a no one-size-fits-all approach, and why strength is so important in our daily lives. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Now, on with the show. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to 5x3 Radio. Rebecca and I are here on this uh, Thursday morning that was kind yeah. of nice and now it looks a little gloomy again, but it's March. We made it. Yeah. Into, and made actually, it Emily, it's just you said that welcome back. And that reminds me, we saw um, the new Ant- Ant-Man movie over the weekend. Oh. Featuring the Welcome Back Cotter song. I was going to say, welcome back. Oh, as soon as you said that, <laughs> now I got the song stuck in my head. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I remember that song. Um, that show. Um, who was it? Was it John Travolta? Yeah, it was John Travolta. I can't remember the, the who played the teacher, but uh-huh. yeah. Yep. That was like, what? 70s. Oh, total 70s with the big awesome. cheese mustache. Yeah. But, that was a yeah. good show. That was a good show. They don't make those kind of shows anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go to. You, you have could to probably go. watch them on rerun someplace. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Like like I did with the A team. I was watching my my A team reruns. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Rebecca and I decided I need the pool. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't done a podcast um, on what. Speaking of stuff from long ago, stuff from long ago, exactly, and how our views have changed. <laughs> our views and how we have changed our thinking about just uh, training and our coaching, and I guess some some nutrition changes too. Some nutrition, you know, different views that, that hasn't changed too much for me. But um, more importantly, like our our I guess our views on training when we were younger, um, and even now as we're getting older. <laughs> Right. There's kind of like, there's really been a different, a, um, an ebb and flow with the, with, with the training, you know, what we used to do, what we started doing, we realized was better. And then from there adapted even more, um, you know, from what, with our, with our own training and then training, um, others definitely, I've definitely kind of changed yeah, a little like bit. A, a then and now. A yeah. Then and- yeah. A then and now. So, where should we begin with this? Should you, do you want to go back to, okay, let's say when we were in our twenties, <laughs> this is what well, we Well, I mean, I don't know that we need to necessarily do this like decade by decade. I think we could do broad strokes. I think you and I both basically started out in a somewhat similar place where we thought, you know, cardio was king. Cardio was whatever. king and queen and yeah. prince and princess. Yeah. Yes. The whole royal family. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Um, and, um, you know, I I think we've probably talked about, uh, that to some degree in in other podcasts, but as a a dancer, the sort of fear of lifting things that were heavy. Oh my gosh, it's going to bulk me up. I don't, you know, want to. What was crazy was, so I started getting, I started going to the gym when I started college, right? Because prior to that, I was just dancing. And I danced all the time. So there was no gym and gyms really weren't really kind of um, on people's radar in that, in this way, in the way they are now. And this is like what, this is like the like early nineties. Right. Um, but my dad bought a rowing machine. So I started rowing and I loved it. I fell in love with it. So that kind of led me to the gym and the gym at UMBC was so small. I mean, it may have been, it may have been like 900 square feet of space. There was like nothing there, a couple of treadmills mm-hmm. and then you know, weight machines. And we've talked about that. Like a hotel gym. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so, you know, and I found, and I, and, but I started, I started, you know, enjoying going to the gym because I, I liked the way it felt even on the machines, like even doing the, the machines. Right. I liked uh, that feeling of kind of uh, my legs feeling like they were, they were getting stronger. Um, I wasn't trying to, I guess I was doing it to, to also compliment my dancing, but I was just, it was just haphazard. And I'm wondering, is that, was that kind of the same for you? Kind of like a haphazard, like I'm going to the gym because. Yeah. I mean, definitely like my main deal was the running and, you know, for me, most of the time that was stuff that I did outside. So I didn't have 
other than if it was like totally crappy weather outside, I didn't have much use at that point for a gym. Like if it was bad weather outside and, you know, high school, you know, coach would take us to the gym and we'd just spend the day training. Right. Right. Like it wasn't a missed day, but we were weightlifting. And like you said, like totally haphazard, it was more, um, you know, just to fill the, the time and not get sopping wet. Yeah. It was like, if I wasn't, if I wasn't dancing, I was at the gym doing, doing something. And actually one of the dancers, and she wasn't a major, she wasn't a dance major. She took dance classes. I remember very clearly she was a bodybuilder and she always wore baggy sweatpants and like the cutoff shirts, the sweatshirts that had like the shoulder, shoulder, right. Off the shoulder and walked around. Yeah. Like faint and walked around with a gallon of water. Hmm. I, she, and, and it like was clearly like, this is what she did. She and her boyfriend did. I never really saw her body because she was always covered up, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I was enamored and I was fascinated by like that kind of bodybuilder world. And that's, mm-hmm. that's my, like my, my first delve into like, oh, you know, lifting weights or doing it, but it was more the bodybuilding. And I never really did much with it because again, I was, I was, I was dancing. But when I moved to New York after graduating from college, first thing I did was, of course, join a gym because I have to have a gym. But again, it was just kind of going and doing mindless things, mostly treadmill with ellipticals out then. I think there might have been ellipticals or something like that. But um, I remember just using the machines, but focusing again more on kind of like being on the cardio machines for like an hour at a time. And I had this very disjointed view of like what I wanted my body to look like, which was a very muscular body. I had pictures of swimmers. I had pictures of basketball players, female basketball players, volleyball, Gabrielle Reese, right? The basket, the, the volleyball player. I wanted to look like her, except what I was doing at the gym was completely opposite <laughs> of, what, of what I should have been doing. And I had this very disjointed idea of like, well, if I'm going to, if I'm going to lift weights, I'm going to get too big. And I wrote that somewhere in one of my journals when I was living in New York. I don't want to get big. I don't want to lift weights because it's going to make me bulky. And I don't. But I had these pictures in my journal too of these women who had who were muscular. But in my mind, it wasn't bulkiness. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Actually, as I'm talking about this, I was so completely convoluted in my thinking of gym versus you know, body versus what I should look like, what I don't want to look like. And I, it was it, nothing came to nothing came to fruition. I kind of kept thinking, like, I felt like I was spinning my wheels always, but I had to go to the gym, but there was never really a plan, you know, of action. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just, it, it checks that box. It calms the right. anxiety about like, I need to be doing something right. or I need to, I need to exercise in order to, to stay fit or in order to, and it was you a, know. yeah, it was a never ending cycle because I would look at myself and I'd still say, well, <laughs> I still don't like what I see. Like, I'm still not looking like this chick over here in this picture, but of course it's because I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing anything right, but no one was telling me what I could do. Right. And I didn't want to lift weights because I didn't want to get big. And it was like, it was a completely, it just, I just didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know yeah. what I was doing. I mean, like, I guess, you know, at that point, at that stage in my life, there wasn't even any real kind of like idea of, I want to look like this athlete. It was more, I wanted to run. I wanted to run faster, but nobody ever really put together for right. me the idea that if I strength trained, my times might decrease. I might be faster if I were stronger. Right. That wasn't part of the thinking at that point. So it was always like, go out for a run. And there was definitely like, you're talking about, you, you spend like four hours at mm-hmm. the gym or you're just there and mm-hmm. more is better, right? And I definitely had that about running. Like there was a certain minimum amount, like if it wasn't a five mile run, it really wasn't a run. Right. It was sort of like, I may as well call that a rest day. Or right. A day <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, exactly. Some and, convoluted thinking there as well. Very. <laughs> and I, I can remember, and, and I, and I, you know, this is years later when I kind of s- sat and thought about it. I was like, why was I so stupid? But nobody really, you know, dancers didn't train. Dancers didn't strength train. There wasn't that idea of like dancers. I mean, if dancers went to the gym, whatever, they went to the gym on their own. Like my, I did and my, and my girlfriends did when I was in college. But my junior year, I had decided that, you know, I was going to join the Marine Corps because screw this dancing thing. It's not going to work out for me. So I spent like my whole junior year, um, 
deciding that I was going to join the Marine Corps, right? That was going to be my goal. swung the other way. <laughs> I was, it really did. And I was like, that's it. I'm going to join. I'm going to become an officer candidate. I'm going to go to officer candidate school. And I'm just going to follow my father's footsteps. Um, and I, you know, went down to Quantico and I did the whole thing down there. And I met with one of the, you know, the captain down in Prince, uh, I think it was, uh, Prince George's where, where the office, the recruitment office was. And I went down there for my physical fitness test and I had been training for this, right? I was doing the run. I was doing my sit-ups. There was a hang that was part of it. You had to hang like your chin above the bar, right? I was like, oh, I can do that. And I get down there and I get up under the bar and I, I must have been up there for maybe about two seconds before I just collapsed. And I was like, okay, well, that didn't go as planned. Then the run, <laughs> the run, the run was fine and the crunches were fine, but I failed the, the physical fitness test because I couldn't ha- I, I had no upper body strength. Right, right. And it didn't dawn on me that it was because I had no upper body strength. It was just kind of like, well, how come the volleyball player can hang there for 75 seconds? Oh, well, she probably has upper body strength because, you know, she strength trains. Well, dancers don't need a strength train, but I thought I had upper body strength from just all the other stuff that I was doing. Nope. Come to find out, you actually have to train for that. Yeah. And, you know, fast well, forward. But, yeah. Yeah. I guess dancing is different too, but like, I wonder, like, I don't necessarily remember in high school or college, like with running sports anyway, there wasn't an organized strength training component to no, it. No, no. Um, and like I, I had played field hockey in there also. There was no organized strength training component to it, you know. But then you fast forward to now, right? So, you know, oh, my God, this yeah. is like at least 40 years later. Right, right. <laughs> Maybe more. Right. And like for my kids, like for Felicia's um, club soccer team, like they're – for club soccer, there's an organized one day a week where they're doing strength training, like specifically in a gym with a trainer. Okay, so one day a week from strength training perspectives is maybe a little bit different than what we might prescribe, but that's worlds different than the sort of haphazard hit or miss. Oh, it's raining today. I guess you should lift weights approach. Right. But I had when I was that age, I mean, I think culturally we've made some progress in terms mm-hmm. of recognizing the importance mm-hmm. of strength training yep. for people at all ages. Because, you know, even even stuff you see in the newspaper these days about the importance of strength training for senior citizens or it's for every other day. Age, right. That is not something like the messaging that you and I grew up with was more like had to do with um, body fat, like can you pinch more than an inch kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Like you wanted to keep the the cultural message was keep your body weight down as opposed to there's now more messaging about the importance of strength training. So, I mean, it's not, I think un, you can't necessarily completely fault us for our ignorance. There no, was, I was going to say we I were was, swimming in the same water. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, thinking like thinking about this and talking this, out, you know, talking out loud about it. Now, you know, our thinking was what we were being told in a sense, right? What we were reading, what we were learning from articles or magazines or people we knew or you know, dancers, you know, there's no strength training program for dancers. Why, you know, I mean, if you want to go to the gym, that's fine, but we don't, you know, there's, why, why would you need that? Why do you, why does anybody need that? So, and that was in the, that was in the uh, sports world too. I mean, you're talking uh, 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 basketball, I mean, swimming, there wasn't, there were no strength training programs for those athletes. It wasn't as, as it is now there where they realize like, oh, wow, strength is for everybody. And <laughs> it's the foundation for all that we do. Let's actually focus on this. So part of it was that we didn't, we were, we didn't know that the, the uh, understand the importance of it. There wasn't we didn't really, know the, and neither did our coaches. Nobody, did, nobody <laughs> knew. And also there was the mindset of, well, I don't want to get big because that was being thrown in our faces too, right? Women don't need to look like this. You don't need to have muscles, da, 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 da. So you're going through now, you know, and your your twenties and your thirties, and the, but the change. Finally, I I I, decided, I stopped thinking I was going to get big, and started realizing, okay, let's get off the treadmill, let's get off the elliptical machine, let's do some strength training, right? But there still wasn't the idea of like, why am I doing this? Am I doing this to get stronger? No, I'm trying to do this for a smaller body. 
I'm trying to do this to lose weight. There was still that mental, there was that, there, yeah. that was always the goal, right? That was always the goal in eating into my twenties and thirties with the weights. Yeah. With the gym. And I think for me, maybe in there, a, a little blip that that's maybe slightly different is I did in my thirties have this, uh, maybe you could call it aha moment about the importance of strength for everyday mm. utilitarian purposes. But that was like, I had kids. Sure. And and I somehow, <laughs> a trainer at one of the gyms helped me put together the idea that if I were stronger, it would make it a whole lot easier to carry the, the baby car seats mm-hmm. and, you know, that kind of thing. So there was like a little bit in there for me where there was a reason to have strength. There was a utilitarian purpose for it. But at about the same time, right, like as soon as I kind of got through that phase where having strength for the the physical demands of early babyhood right, right. <laughs> um, had passed and my kids could move themselves around, I didn't have to carry them all the time and everywhere. Um, I had a friend who was like, come on, let's do this. Like one of the group fitness classes that was more strength based. Mm-hmm. And, you know, eventually like, and we, we have this in common too. It was like a group power. So mm-hmm. you and I both mm-hmm. spent some time as group power or slash body pump right. um, instructors. Uh, but like my initial reaction to that was, I don't need that. I don't want to just like you're describing, I don't want to get all muscular. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, you know. That, that like there was a utilitarian reason right. for strength, but like I still had that idea in my head that too much weightlifting was gonna I don't know make me look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's interesting because like yeah for me it was I never no one ever had said that to me. I mean that wasn't like I said as a dancer strength wasn't important. No one ever spoke with the word of strength yeah. of needing strength. Like you're using your own body. I mean aren't you you know you're strong enough. And well, it was that idea with running and people still have yeah. that idea. Like I, people who are runners, a lot of times you still hear this where they say like, well, I probably need to work on some upper body strength, but my legs are fine. Cause I run all the time. Right. People have this idea that they have leg strength right. from running, but that's different. Endurance is different than strength, but people don't generally. Right. Right. That doesn't click for people. No, I mean, I, in, in, in my, into my thirties, going to the gym was still just that going to the gym because that's what you do, right? You go to the gym and I still, and I had my dancing and I was teaching and I was teaching, you know, uh, fifth grade. And then I was at the dance studio teaching dance and, and as a school director and the gym was always important to me, but it was more of just like, I go and I, I do some things and I, and I sweat a lot and I, and that's going to keep me at this, at this size and this weight. And I'm going to be all good. You know, I'm going to be good because my eating was crap at this time. Um, and I never, but I never could connect the fact that why my back was starting to bother me in 2005, six, seven, eight, nine, right. Mm-hmm. Was a result of the fact that I just was deteriorating because of my dancing and my body wasn't really doing much to kind of keep whole go uh, was, wasn't enough, was, wasn't doing enough as I was aging, as I was getting older to compensate for all the movement I'm doing and the bodily harm I'm doing in a sense to my body by, by moving this way. And this, and I'm, and I'm not really doing any kind of resistance training, real resistance training to kind of you know, compensate and balance it out. And, and my back was getting worse and worse and worse. And it was never in my mind of, well, I'm just not strong enough for this. Like, I'm not really the program I'm doing at the gym. It really, you know, I did, so, never, never connected, never, made, never made a connection at all about yeah. if I actually had some kind of, you know, progressive overload program at the, you know, training at the gym, maybe I'd feel different. No, that wasn't, that wasn't what, that wasn't my thinking at all. And we're going into 2008, 2009, when the back was like really just, you know, bombing out. And I still was not focused like on when that. you started. OK, so you at some point, Diego got you started with the starting strength. And in in part, it was because it was something he had been doing and he had his back. That yeah. helped him with his back. And yep. he was recommending that to you for yeah. that purpose initially but like I think you and I both went through like a group power body pump phase 
when did that, when did that I never happen? did. I took body pump oh, one time. Oh, you took it. And I hated oh, I it. Thought you, oh, okay. No, yeah, I remember, taught spin. We're both spin instructors. I was a spin, and I was a spin instructor yeah. for six years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I started out like as a spin instructor and it was like, that made sense. That was mm-hmm. cardio. That mm-hmm. was essentially mm-hmm. the same thing for me. So like the spin was, it filled the gap that I couldn't fill with running. Like I got to a point where I had too many small children to go out for a run. Sure. I could only put two of them into a stroller. Right, right. <laughs> Everyone's like, there was no way Hannah right. was coming along on a bike while I went on a long run or, you know, that kind of thing. So it was like, okay, I'm going to check them into daycare. Right. Now I'm stuck using the machines that are in the gym. And that's how I got switched over to spin at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, spin and treadmills and stuff and then at some point I guess after I had been a spin instructor they were doing a training for group power and I was like okay I'll sure. do, uh, you gotta try and see and then so for me I didn't have a Diego to right. like lead me into starting strength it was like I started doing body pump with the little pretend barbell and you know that sort of stuff and it's all just like a crap ton of reps And, um, there is this vague notion that you're progressively overloading, but like you're talking over a course of two, two to three months, Mm -hmm. right. When they come out with the next release, Mm -hmm. the songs are all different. The movements are different. The programming, the timing, all of that is different. They find a new way to make the participants feel sore. And people are really like the participants are really more tuned into this, like, Oh, I feel sore the next day. And then they think, that they're getting stronger mm-hmm. and there is just sort of mm-hmm. bandied around this vague notion that oh if you're still using the same weights on your pretend barbell that you were using six months ago you haven't been challenging yourself right. like put the bigger weights on right but it was all very nebulous mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. the, the weights didn't weigh normal amounts no, it's, the bar it's, didn't, yeah and it's so easy, you couldn't yeah. 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 You couldn't measure it. It was all no, and for most, And for most people, that's, that's fine. For most people, yeah. it's, I'm doing something in a group setting. I'm having someone else guide me through this. Right. Right. And I'm moving weights. I'm doing resistance training, right? This right. is all I, this is all I really need to do because this yeah. is more exciting and more fun and entertaining, and entertaining and than me going and, out there and actually right. doing like a set of five reps because and this is not this is not fun for me. This is not entertaining for me. This is boring. This yeah. is lim- but that for me was sort of like a um a bridge and an imaginary yes. way to get to the concept of okay, that was sort of like a barbell. So maybe I can see myself using a barbell mm-hmm. and then from there, mm-hmm. like okay, it's not completely unfamiliar. Yeah. Um, I don't, re- I don't remember. I mean, yes, Diego introduced me to, to starting strength in. So I, I started in June of 2010, right. After I was able to walk properly again <laughs> and function mm-hmm. it right after uh, everything with my back. Um, he had been doing it a, for a couple months, but even prior to that fast, I mean, rewind a couple of years, I was slowly, I was teaching a class at, at kinetics and it was a, more of a body weight class was, you know, it was, um, my bar class. <laughs> I say that because I have that article I wrote is still just like the number one article or either I get so much hate from it or people saying, thank you so much for writing this. And I wrote that, like, I don't know how many years ago now, 10 years ago, but I had a bar at a dance studio. Cause that's what I'm, I sweat. That's where I am. I'm in a dance studio, but yeah. I was slowly starting to incorporate push-ups and rows and lunges and additional exercises into this class and people loved it. They kind of got, it was, you know, very low impact. That was really the big thing was it was low impact. So I had books, I had athletic books. I had Rachel Cosgrove's book. If you don't know who Rachel Cosgrove is, she and her husband have a very successful gym out in California called results fitness. They've been around forever. And I, I got her book on basically training as a woman, right. And doing, doing resistance training. And that was my first kind of eye opener to like, Oh, wow you can use a bar, (laughs) you can use dumbbells. Like there's there, and there's a, here's a program and it's designed to, to, well, possibly give me the body that I've, I've been looking for, but it was, so I started using that and kind of delving into that as I really was looking to do more 
training. I wanted to, I wanted to work with people in a personal training set, you know, this environment. And I started in, I started in that capacity. So I was slowly getting away from machines and cardio and learn, leaning more towards this, like, oh, st- kind of stepping, dipping my toes into actual working with like, you know, doing resistance, resistance uh, work. I just didn't know how to really go about doing it. Right. I didn't know how to incorporate that into a bit, the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, it still wasn't giving me the satisfaction. Right. I, I, that makes sense that I was, that I wanted of, of right. uh, as far as like how my body looked and how my body oh. felt. Right. Like the results, the results, the, the result. I was still, I was still wasn't getting the results because I think I still had this mind set mindset of smaller body <laughs> toned body not necessarily where my thinking is today, where our thinking is about strength and a a bigger picture with strength training, rather than just this very, this very small window of, I want to look better. I don't want to look at myself in the mirror and see that, right? That was still really the focus. Definitely was still the focus, even up until 2010, up until I started this program. Um, And the mindset totally shifted after I started the barbell training. So I kind of think, I think I've worked, I mean, we've worked ourselves up from, okay, our twenties <laughs> and our thirties, <laughs> you know, and I, cause I started this in mid, I was 35 when I started this program 13 years ago. Yeah. Cause I'm 48 now. I, I was older than you when I started. I'm older than you now. Yes, you are. You (laughs) always will be older than I, but I think that's, that's the, that's the journey. That's been the journey for Mm -hmm. kind of for us though. Like, you know, we we always started in in one, one aspect, like thinking of, you know, cardio, 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 the gym and what it, and I still never had a idea of like, why am I going to the gym? What's the, what's the purpose? Well, so I, I guess the thing that's interesting to me too, though, is like once you and I both started with starting strength right that starting strength answers the whys right um and it also gives you a um you know um it sets your goal for Mm -hmm. you right get as strong as possible as quickly as possible Mm -hmm. using the most muscle mass over the greatest effective range of motion you know like that, yeah. Right? And it, yeah. And it wasn't even like for me in the beginning, I didn't even give a shit about any of that. Like that wasn't all I realized was my back feels better. Mm. Like what the hell just yeah. happened? How, how is my, how is my back better after almost five years of the feeling like shit? And now this is the first time in years in just two months where I actually feel like my body's back. Like I have control again over my body. And it took my took me away from what I looked like and and to how I felt because <laughs> I forgot how it felt to feel good mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and not in pain <laughs> and and that and then I learned more about it. But at the time, you know, it was just Diego just said, "Try this. This is kind of cool." And I've been reading. Like been doing you this. found the magic, the special sauce. Yeah. This is what works. Like this is PT thing. didn't work, and my doctor's going to give me a back brace, and I'm like, I can't. I'm not. 30, I'm 35 years old. Something has to give. And there was a purpose for going to the gym too. That's what it was. It was like, I had a purpose now for going to the gym. I had a program. I was following something. My husband was coaching me. Um, there was this progression of adding more weight and, and warming, yeah. warming up. And it was, it felt so good to have a purpose and have a reason for well- and it takes, well, I mean, I think the reason that the starting strength program is really appealing to a lot of people is it takes a lot of the confusion away, right? It You can step into a, a training facility, a weight room, mm-hmm. you can look at the equipment and there, like you can have a, a room packed with equipment and you know what to do and where to start mm-hmm. and what is going to help you get stronger in the most efficient um time time efficient way yeah right like you don't have to waste your time doing like the leg extension and work each different muscle right. group right just work the whole and we can yeah. yeah yeah and we can sell that we can sell that now and that's what we do right that's how we sell it but in the beginning for me no one sold that to me it was just 
try this because you've tried everything else and nothing's worked, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? And, but what, what, what I came away with was, holy shit, this doesn't just work, but I love the way I feel. I'm doing something that a lot of women aren't doing. Uh, There's progression to it. Um, it's something different than what I've been trying to do with the dumbbells and the, this and the step ups and the, this and the little, you know, the, you know, and it's just three lifts and I can still work on my chin ups and we can still do burpees, which we did one day. We did like 20 minutes of burpees. We never did that again. <laughs> so we're still, we're still doing stupid shit. He and I, but we had this yeah. and it was this kind of a revelation of I never thought this was going to feel so good. And my body didn't change at all (laughs) over it. Like it didn't change at all. What I did did was it made me feel better, like physically, physically better and well more, way more aware of myself and way more aware of what, what it meant to train and to have a program. And, you know, um, I, I always relate it to dance because it's like you go in the first thing you do are your plies. So the first thing you do is you squat and the first, then, then you do this and then you do this and then you go home. And I liked having that kind of very, you know, scheduled, scheduled plan, but more importantly, it, it did, it shifted my mindset so much. Like, I mean, it, I, 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 I remember, I mean, I, I think about it now, how did I think, all all those years ago, all that crap I was doing was was the right thing to do. And this has been like the best thing the past 13 years that I've ever done for myself. Like given that and given your, like you're describing sort of this, like it was an epiphany. um, epiphany. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times I think people, when they find starting strength, and I think I went through a phase like this, mm-hmm. um, become kind of strict adherents, mm-hmm. um, disciples mm-hmm. even of starting strength, um, and almost um, like seemingly a lot of times very rigid in their thinking or their approach. I think and that's... Did you go through a phase like that? No, I think that's now because when we started it, it was 2010. And this was only, it only been around for like maybe a year, two years. Starting strength. It was, it was not really, I mean, this, the, we, we had the, we had the first edition or like the, the actual book, like before that it was like a PDF. You know? <laughs> I um, mean, he was doing this in CrossFit gyms and right, okay. I think CrossFit, he may have just broken from CrossFit. Right. So when we went, I went to a CrossFit gym for our seminar. It was in New Jersey. It was at Gorilla Fitness. And I remember going in there, it was fucking freezing in that gym. I was like, why is it so cold in here? It was a warehouse. I'd never been to a CrossFit gym before. Mm-hmm. And they're like, and we get, we sit and we, you know, we, we sit and we listen to the lecture. And the next day when we, when we go to, to, you know, to, to do, to do the platform work, they're like, okay, go in the rowing machines and row a bit. And I, I, I hadn't been on a rowing machine forever, but I'm like, what are we doing? <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was so confused <laughs> to like, where we were, there were no mirrors. There was like nothing, you know, and it was a whole new experience for me. And I didn't know anything about CrossFit. There was a couple there that had, they were wearing all the Lululemon. They were head to, they were dressed head to toe in Lululemon and everybody's eating their nuts and their berries and their <laughs> snacks. And at dinner, we all went out to dinner and everyone's eating dinner and no one's eating bread. And I ordered pita bread because it was a Greek restaurant and everyone's like staring at me and staring at me and my bread and my, and my hummus. And I'm like, what's going on guys? Like, I mean, don't it's it's hummus and pita bread and you can see them just wanting to have it so badly but i was like what world am i living i didn't care all i knew was this was the best experience i've had in my life where i I was learning something i would never learn before and i love being a student i love being a student and i walked away from that going my god i i had no idea that there was a world like this of of just of, of all this so there wasn't and and they I remember them saying to us, whatever you do on Monday, you do on Monday. This weekend, you're learning this. And they also said, shook our hands and said, thank you very much for coming. You'll never hear from us again. We're not that organization. You know, we're just, you know, we just want to help people make, be better and be stronger. That was 20, that was 2010, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, so fast forward how many years later, 
it's a lot bigger. It became bigger. And as a result of it getting bigger, it became a little bit more cultish, rigid, whatever you want to call it, right? But when we fell into it, we fell into this idea of, wow, four, five lifts, you, you get stronger, you can teach it, here's a model for it to give people a chance to like progress and get stronger. And it's, it was a way of us to learn how to become better coaches too, how to learn to coach people, how to learn to have, to develop our coaching. eye. that's what it gave us. That's what it gave me and Diego, the ability yeah. to really become, to really kind of take, bring this to people and then grow from there and, and learn from there. And then having more people come in and teach them and more people come in and teach them and see the program evolve. And there was a time where we didn't really even do the program. We just had the, we had the model. We, we knew how to teach it, but we weren't teaching the program. We weren't doing the program with people because we didn't have enough people. And the gym wasn't open enough days for us to do like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday type of deal, right? It wasn't until we grew and we had the opportunity to have, we had more people, which meant we had more opportunity to teach more people. And then we had more days in the week to, for people to train, it became, well, now we can really quote unquote, do the program. So we started to really teach, teach the model. But for us, it's always been just using the model as what it is, the model. <laughs> you yeah. Know? I mean, I guess like you're talking about, like, it gives you a roadmap. It and gives you a roadmap. Sort of, yeah. Absolutely. And for me, when I started doing the personal training, it definitely was that for me in terms right. of my training. Like, how am I as a, as a personal trainer in a commercial gym, what do I bring to the table that's different than yes. trainer X, Y, or Z? Yes, yes. Like, why would a person want to work with me? Yes. And out of all of this stuff, you know, how do I simplify it for people? What are, you know, so it was like, um, definitely um, gave me more confidence as a, as a trainer or mm -hmm. as a coach, like I knew what I was looking for, as opposed to when you just get your regular certification as a personal trainer through whatever certifying organization you right. go through, they teach you a whole lot of random crap, right? Like right. everything under the sun. And right. then they're like, great. Now you're a personal trainer, but there's a huge difference between whether you're going to be a trainer who focuses on, um, you know, helping people get stronger versus helping people develop um, endurance for marathons or, you know, whether you're mm -hmm. helping people, I don't know. And then even within that, there's, you know, different ideas of how you get mm -hmm. people stronger. Right. Lots of right. people, you right. know, will have their clients use machines right. or dumbbells or, right. you know, oh, you're over a certain age. So you need to be in the silver sneakers class. Right. And we're going to give you a folding chair on which you sit to do right. your, your bicep curls, right. like that kind of thing. Um, so it, it just gave me the confidence to be able to work with people according to a model that mm -hmm. like, even though I, as a starting trainer, didn't have a whole ton of experience under my belt. I didn't have, you know, tens or hundreds of clients that I had previously worked with. It was a body of information mm -hmm. and a, a coaching um, community mm -hmm. that, that was, was supportive, right? Like that said, yeah, we've worked with people who have had that issue and here's, you know, so it was just a nice network yep. um, for coaching questions as yep. well. But I definitely did also then go through a a phase of this is the right answer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> All of the rest of you are wasting your time and your client's time. And you should be doing this because this is the, the only right and true approach to yeah. getting stronger. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, I think there was, was, or is like, a um, a segment of starting strength, the starting strength community or, um, you know, media or social media mm -hmm. or whatever that kind of perpetuates that sort of mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. look down your nose at everybody else in the gym wasting mm -hmm. their time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think, like I said, for us, it didn't really, didn't start out that way. And it's, and it isn't, it isn't that way still. Um, we both got certified. We found the program. We did the program for, you know, four months. <laughs> we decided to go get certified. Somehow we, somehow we got certified. 
That's 2010. That's 2010. And then we opened the gym. I opened my gym in 2011, in June of 2011. So that was November of 2010. We got certified. Wait, and- Emily, some people are early adapters and some people are late adapters. I think we just got, we just got into it when we did. We got into it right yeah. when we, you know, under the radar kind of thing. And it was yeah. more of like, you know what you're doing. And the more you do this, the better you will get. And that's exactly what happened. Because four years later, when we had to go and do that all over again, it was pretty clear that, you know, we knew what we were doing and we, and we, and we knew this method and we knew this model and we liked it and we were using it. And by that time, I really had enough clients to build a a, a good solid program, you know, around it. But in the beginning, it was more just teaching people how to squat, press, bench, and deadlift to whoever wanted to come in and learn from us. And, right? And even, even just with that, like, that sounds simple enough, but like, even in a commercial gym setting, mm-hmm. like, teaching people to squat, even though like high bar, low bar, whatever, Mm -hmm. right? Like you, you get people that are going to tell you if you're doing your low bar squat, oh, you're going to break your back over that bar, whatever. Even people who are okay with the, I, I mean, it's like, I get, I hear from trainers, like, oh, certain people shouldn't be squatting. Like I had that happen just actually even in the past two weeks where, um, Mm -hmm. You know, somebody was saying like, well, I wouldn't have them do any of that crazy stuff. Like it was a client who was just doing like dumbbell squats in, you know, so it's, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's, Some it's. People think that just certain movements are, are dangerous or not, not good for knees or not good for backs. So yeah. Whatever. And it's really, it's, it's a shame because, you know, people are, I have a client who's going to start with me on Monday. And he just had a second knee replacement. It's a father of one of my clients. Mm -hmm. And he sat down to talk to me. And when he stood up, he couldn't stand up until Mm -hmm. he put his, both his hands on the chair and pushed himself up. He he pushed. pushed And he said, this is why I said, this is why you're coming to me. Cause this is why I'm coming to you. Right. Right. And he needs to learn how to squat. He needs to learn how to sit there because he said to me, I don't want to end up in a wheelchair. He's 71. Yeah. And he could clearly, as he, if he ages, as he ages and he continues to go the way he's going without actually doing some type of, of strength work, he will end up in a wheelchair or need a walker. Or yeah. Both. And, I mean, that's another bit of like the added confidence of the yes. program, I think, is yes. that there's a lot of research and science behind um, the, the articles that are presented in yes. the starting strength media and so when you know like I starting out as a new trainer a couple years ago I'm hearing from the the um, trainers at the gym with more experience or you know other individuals Mm -hmm. they're like oh squats are dangerous they're bad for your knees I would not have my clients doing that like I then feel confident Mm -hmm. (laughs) to Mm -hmm. say no that's nice but you're wrong (laughs) but in a nice way (laughs) right right and I and it's and then so you know so you think about how many years ago if I were a, a if I had started training and coaching people when I was in my twenties what I would do what I would do with them it'd be very different <laughs> you know because my thinking was different and yeah. now as a result of um, learning more about this program and learning more about the human body and understanding more about you know myself I see it's it's now turned to strength is functional, right? Strength is needed. And your body will be the body you have if you give it what it needs. And by learning, by getting stronger, your whole focus changes on what your body is capable of doing and and what it looks like. And you start to see a different person in the mirror, especially if you have, like I say, if you have any body image issues, if you've got, right? As, as I had, as you know, you've had, you see a different person, you see a confident person. So the strength training that at least the the way that we, that we approach it gave that to me that no other program had ever done before. And I see it do that for my other clients too, for my, and especially my women, right? It's, and it, it's becomes this, you know, that what it did too was just my, as far as like, what is, how have I changed over the years? I see my, I see going to the gym and training as just that training in order to make my body more functioning, right? As I age, I want to be more independent. There was a great quote from an article that I posted recently from the Washington Post about 
uh, aging, right? And, that, and the benefits of strength training as we get mm-hmm. older. And it was exercise is the best prescription for maintaining independence. And that is, yeah. that is all I, I, that's all I preach these days, is, you know, is about the stronger you are, the more independent you will be able to, to, to be. And, and I think that's a message that really resonates with people yes. of a certain age. But like, if you had tried to present that message to 20 year old, you right. like crickets, crickets, exactly. And st- even still, like, I mean, I think my 30 year olds and maybe my 20 year olds who come, you know, they have that message. The message is that this is, they, they, they want this, this is, they enjoy this. This is good for them. My 30 year olds, my 40 year olds, it is for that purpose of, I want to age well. I want my quality of life to be, to be better. Um, and then it's also those people bringing their parents in because they see their parents starting to deteriorate and they don't want that to happen. And they've encouraged them and being able to convince them to do this, or they come in on their own. Like my member's father did. He came and he, he asked her when I would like to start, you know, I, I really want to do something. I need to do something. And it's like, he should, yeah, he needs to do it today, not next week, <laughs> but, ne- but now, because it's only going to get, you know, it's only going to, it, it'll, it sneaks up on you, right. All of a sudden you're, you know, you're, you're a year older, you're two years older, you're four years older. Um, your body is going to start to age. How can you keep that quality of life that you've that you've been enjoying to a point where you can really, you know, really maintain that 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 uh, that independence? So I really like that quote a lot. Um, so yeah, my thinking of my coaching, my approach to training, totally different. I've also changed my at least the the approach that we have. We still we're still teaching obviously our Barbara method. We're still using the starting strength model, but I, I definitely, you know, have programmed differently and I do a lot more accessory work and a lot more assistance work with my clients, right? We have, we have two cable machines. Now we have a leg press, you know, we have a lot of, we have a lot of, we have a lot of, um, uh, specialty bars that we, that we utilize, you know, safety squat bar, uh, a Viking press attachment. So there's a lot of variation in the program, you know, we're not just sticking with those four big lists. Well, I mean, but the other thing too is your your gym has been in operation for a number of years. Right. You've got a lot more intermediate trainees than, right. than so you need that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And even by even oh. my newer ones, even my beginner lifters, you know, I'll I'll start putting them on, you know, start giving them rows early on. I'll start doing and a lot of that is because I realize they need it. People need more than just those, you know, those big lifts, they're good in the beginning for like the first couple of months because it's, it keeps them, keeps them focused. It builds a sense of, you know, of uh, confidence and um, establishes their program. But over time I start to, you know, I start, I start to throw in those other exercises in there because one variety, right. Keeping somebody engaged in what they're doing Two, just going to compliment I mean, it's just, you know, they're going to, they're going to learn what their back actually does in a row. <laughs> they're going to, they're going to understand how to, how to move their, their scapula together. Right. I mean, there, there are benefits to those other exercises beyond, you know, besides just, um, uh, you know, giving them to people because, you know, they, you want to fill the time. They do have a purpose too. And I start to feel as though they are part of my program. They are part of the program too. Um, and people enjoy it. They enjoy the variety right? They also like the fact that they can see their other lifts getting better as a result. Um, and they want to keep coming back and do, and do more and do more. That may not have been the case, you know, in the, uh, in the past, maybe because I didn't have the equipment either, but also just wasn't really, you know, I didn't yeah, have as many I, people I hanging know, around. When I first started with you, I had to, I had to like beg to get like some sort of a row. Right, there. right. I, and so it was like a little while before I was like, uh, I, I guess he gave me a T bar, T bar row for, for a yeah, while. Yeah, people want to do like, curls, like, go ahead, do curls. Yeah. I was like, dude, I really think I should be doing some kind of a rowing movement. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so we've, so I've evolved that way too. We're trying to provide my clients with even a more well rounded program. Right. I mean, sometimes it's like you might have a client, like maybe I, maybe I fall or fell into that category for you, but like sometimes it's like, 
in order to get a person to do the program, maybe you have to like toss them a, free, a few crumbs, right? Like, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Like, all right. There's really no point of you doing yeah. bicep curls or calf raises at this point in your program. But if that's going to get you to buy in, do it. Then, okay. Have that's right. It. That's right. That's right. I'm going to give so people, yeah. yeah. I'm going to give people what they need, but also give people what they want as well. Yeah. Right. Um, Well, and I guess that's also the difference between like, okay, so if you're starting strength and you are selling the program, you're going to be true to the program and you're going to figure that the people who want to do that program are going to find it and implement it the way it's written Yes. or YNTDP, whatever, whatever, right? right? You're not my target demographic. When you're running a gym or you're working as a personal trainer, you're kind of coming at it from the other angle where it's like, you've got the people, Mm -hmm. you know, the program that's going to help them, but they may not want the program. So Mm -hmm. it's like, it's always been for me with um, individuals, especially at, you know, commercial gym settings, like, how can I get this person to do as much of the program as I can possibly get them to do? while, you know, like kind of ease them into it or, you know, like, um, you know, they have their ideas about what they want to do based on what they see other people doing, what they've read and a little bit of the, it's not doing the program, but a little bit of the program is better than not at all. So yeah. Yeah. make compromises to get somebody in the, in the door and yes. interest. Yes. And you're right. Like at, at our gym, because people come specifically for that program or they come for the barbell work, maybe yeah. it's not, maybe they don't, they don't know that we use the model, the starting strength model. They don't, you know, they don't care about but that. They've already come, come in the door knowing they're walking anyway, into yeah. a gym that focuses primarily on barbell. And we give them and we give them this program and the program is this bar, you know, we teach them, you're going to teach you to squat, press, bench, and deadlift. They want that. Yeah. Um, Whereas and, like when I start with a new client and they say they want to squat, I always end up asking like, do you have any thoughts on barbells? What are your thoughts? You know, like, <laughs> and that's I not even screen to see what their biases are. <laughs> and that's not even like, that's not, that's never the question because you walk in and that's all you see at my place. Yeah. You, you get to skip that stage yeah. of the uh, <laughs> client so, orientation. So, so they get all excited, like a couple months into the program where I say to them, okay, now we're going to take the deadlift out on this day. We are I'm like, yeah, we're going to do some rows. We are. And it's like, <laughs> oh my God, you know, it's like a whole brand new day. And it's like, yeah, if you're going to have a heavy press and you're going to do a light bench and we're going to do some rows and, or someone says, I really want to work on my chin-ups. I'm like, great. We're going to work on chin-ups. I'm going to work on my push-up. Great. We're going to work on push-ups. And you start to we just start to add those in. But I don't necessarily want to throw those in until we get the person settled where they are. And then it's nice to all of a sudden start to see the pro they start to see the program evolve so they can see that we're constantly thinking of them. We're constantly trying to change and make them better and make them stronger. Um, and it's just the fact that they can't keep adding five pounds. So eventually, you know, something has to give. <laughs> this is this is and this is the way to do it. But I, yeah, I don't have to sell that because that's already sold, right? (laughs) That's already, that's already sold. It's, but it is, I, for some of my, some clients who are very diehard, I only want to lift this way. I have to be a little bit more creative about how I sneak in those extra exercises, you know, because they don't necessarily want that. Why am I doing this? I I'm sweating too much. It feels like cardio because I'm having them do like a super set of something. I'm like, oh my God, fine. We'll just take them out. You know, I mean, it'd be good for you to do this because some of them just want the program. So, you know, those people, I have to kind of try to like finagle them to do something else because they're so set on the program. But most people at the gym, they love the fact that it's a, it's varied, you know, and everyone, everyone really does have their own program while they're all doing pretty much the same, you know, the same lifts. Um, I just, I, I like, I, my, my programming hasn't changed too much in that sense, except just add in, you know, different, um, different exercises and try to broaden, broaden their, uh, uh, their programming. So they get a little bit more, like I said, a little bit more well-rounded, you know, program. Um, I just, I just think overall, like for me, probably for you too, our sense of just what has changed for us over the years and how we come to view training and the gym time is just so different from where I was 30 years ago. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm actually still kind of thinking about accessory exercises because (laughs) like a lot of, um, 
I mean, and how my thinking has changed, but like Mm -hmm. I I did that whole um, pelvic floor prenatal postpartum um, coursework. And so like the whole idea of having people do single leg work or lateral work, um, like I will toss that in for people into their programs Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more now with that in mind. Uh Like, first of all, I think it's good for some people, especially if they're desk bound to be able to work and move in more planes of motion Uh than they do when they're sitting at their Uh desk and when they're doing their barbell lifts. Uh Right. So like people who generally live in a very, um, sort of rigid (laughs) movement path. Right. 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 It's, it's good to get them to, I think good to get them to move, like toss in some lateral lunges, some single leg, um, art, you know, RDLs or something like that, just to get them using their body, comfortable using their body in different ways. Cause you know, sometimes you do get off your balance and it's important to be able to, to be comfortable Mm -hmm. in that, Mm -hmm. you know, other motion um but then also just like the importance of doing that for pelvic floor health um is something that I wasn't really aware of yeah. or didn't think about um until more recently so but that whole that whole thought process of why why is it in the program mm-hmm. um is something that um you know, is obviously very different from what we were discussing, um, our approach being when we were in our twenties or thirties, there wasn't really, um, such a solid why, um, or at least not such a, a functionally based why. No. The, the why was all based on aesthetics and, you know, that's fine. That'll, that'll take you a certain, a certain distance, um, especially like, you know, in terms of fitness or whatever, but it doesn't kind of cover all of the important aspects of why, of why a person might be exercising and doing things in the gym. Yeah. Why a person might yeah. Be training. yeah. And I, I think I, I, I really do. I think a lot about what I was doing back then and why I was doing it. And I, and like I said, the, the pictures I had of, of who I wanted to look like, and yet the way I was doing it, the way I was going about it was just so wrong. And I wasn't eating, you know, I was trying to starve myself and, and then, and doing tons of cardio and like I said, being in the gym for four hours and having this complete uh, mindset of I'm going to the gym so I can be thinner, so I can be smaller and I'm not going to eat because if I don't eat, then I I'll be smaller. And now it's the opposite of, I go to the gym to be bigger because <laughs> I want to have, I want to, I'd like to have m- more muscle and gain more strength. And I eat because eating is important to lift, to, to build those, that muscle and, you know, recover from my workouts. And, and it's a, it's a whole other, it's like a whole other world. I mean, the, the thought of like eating and enjoying eating and why I'm eating and I'm eating to train and I train because I want to be stronger. It's, it's not even that, that, that me, that 48 year old me talking to like 22 year old me, 22 year old me were like, Oh my, who are you? Where have, where have you come from? <laughs> who are you and what have you done? <laughs> People talk about wanting to be back in their twenties. I was talking to Diego about this last night, you know, Oh, I wish when I was in my twenties, I'm like, I don't, rem- I don't ever want to go back to my twenties. I never, the, 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 except when I met Diego. Okay. That was my late twenties though, but <laughs> I, I do not ever want to go back to my twenties. I don't like the way I felt about myself. I don't, I don't like the way that I look because I was doing so much harm to myself by what I was doing and how I was going about doing things. It was not a very pleasant time for me. Um, it, early thirties was better by my mid thirties, late thirties. I was great. And I was, and I was on a much better path, healthier path. Yeah, And I mean, I think that's probably just also for a lot of people, the natural course of getting older and wiser. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. Cause I mean, yeah. I think that, you know, there are plenty of people who still are stuck in that mindset of when they were in their twenties and wanting to go back to the, because they're older. 
I don't, I I like, I think one of the things that you've mentioned that strength training has done for you is shifted your perspective and given you more confidence. Mm -hmm. And usually what you're describing about wanting to go back or being, you know, like there's, there's a level of insecurity involved. Yes. 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 And so if a person is able to find a way to be more comfortable, confident and secure in who they are and, you know, their body, how they're using it, how they're gaining, what they're gaining instead of what they feel like they've lost. And yeah. Left yes. Out, yes. Then that kind of um, helps to. Yeah. And I think that's exactly that what the, uh, yeah, I think that's exactly what the strength training does and why my thought as, as, you know, as a coach, I'm so glad has shifted into such a different mindset because I'm able to provide that for my clients of all ages, but really, you know, I think take people who may not feel so confident or comfortable in their bodies and make them strong and then make them confident, you know, being able to feel like they can go, they can travel again, or they can start traveling because now their back doesn't bother them anymore. Their knees don't hurt them anymore. Um, Because that is ultimately, I think really you know, what we, you know, the benefit of, of what we do is just to make ourselves feel like we are, you know, our daily lives are easier. Like you were saying, you know, mm-hmm. with the, when you were, when you had the little ones. Um, yeah. Or like you're talking about with the article, you know, like maintaining independence, independence, right? independence. I think so many people end up in nursing homes or end up in assist living homes because they're, they, they can't take care of themselves. It, it, it's, it, it can be different and, and it doesn't have to necessarily even be with a bar, you know, with a barbell, just some, some type of, you know, getting stronger can start in so many ways, right? It just, you just need to have some kind of progressive overload. You need to understand that going to the gym needs to be more than just going to the gym, <laughs> you know, there needs to be some type of there, just like with anything, there needs to be a plan, right? And, and sometimes you need to have somebody to help you with that plan. That's where a coach comes into play. <laughs> and that's something I wish I'd had all those years ago, a coach. Yeah. You know, I never had, I never had anybody. It's like, it's like we all need somebody in there, but there wasn't at the time, you know, why, why would you want to get stronger? Why would you want to be stronger? You know, I, and I would have asked myself the same question. Why? What's the point of that? But, you know, times have changed. Um, other thoughts? I think we've pretty much covered it. I think that's good. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I think we, uh, this, this, this topic, and we might come back to this topic, everybody, not, not so much in this kind of detail, detail, but, um, I think, uh, when I, when we started talking about this or or when, when Diego suggested this, he thought of maybe how we have changed our minds as coaches with, in regards to training our clients. Well, we could talk about that another time. <laughs> yeah, Diego is a scientist, so his question was specific. Exactly, exactly. But I think you and I are like, what? What, it, what was your major? Because I was an English major. I got I was all a dance major. World <laughs> dance, ma- dance major. It's a dance major. Well, well, we got historical about it. Um, but I think that's. I think having knowing where people come from, and, and why we've reached where we, we, you know, we are today will help maybe other people kind of get an idea of thinking, thinking about their own, their own process of, of, in training and their own journey. And maybe we'll be able to help other people who have, who are thinking more of what we thought about when we were in our twenties and thirties and steer them in the direction of where we are today. You know, what strength training can do for you, what it really, what, what it really can help you with. You know, not just, you know, uh, a word you throw out there, but think, get, get a little deeper into what it does for you. You know, um, Manny, you know, was talking about the psych, his, I mean, he's always philosophizing at the gym and he was talking about just that yesterday, how much a better person he is. I mean, oh, right. you know, he, I think, he, I think he talked about that on, yeah, his, on the podcast. Yeah, there's a lot of life lessons involved in strength training. So much. That's a whole other, Emily, that's a whole other day. Whole other day. Whole other day. Yeah. So we, um, I think we'll, uh, we'll end there because that's, uh, that's as much as we have to <laughs> to say on the, on the matter. We could probably talk about other things too, but um, if uh, you've got questions or uh, comments about what we've talked about today, please share them with us. We'd love to hear from you. You know, you can always reach out to me at emily at five by com or Rebecca at Cornerstone Strength Maryland at gmail.com. We've got the Charm City Strong Women con- Contest coming up June 11th, Sunday, June 11th. Um, we'll start our uh, 
campaign sometime in May, our donation campaign, sometime our fundraising campaign in May. So look for that yeah, link. Yeah, Chris mentioned that the other day. Mm-hmm. You were oh yeah, I contacted him. I have to go get pick up a um a sponsorship from him. And um and then to any of our listeners who um live in the area or um don't aren't near a a coach and want to get some some coaching, uh we are running a squat and deadlift camp on Sunday, April 30th at the gym from 8.30 a.m. Nice. until 1 p.m. So you can go to the Starting Strength um, website um, and register via them for that event if you want to come up for the camp on Sunday, April 30th. And we'll be back in another couple weeks, Rebecca and I, um, to talk a little bit more about strength training. Strength training. <laughs> <laughs> what we like to talk about the most. <laughs> uh, so join us then and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Thanks everybody. Have a great week. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. More about Rebecca, please visit her website, cornerstonestrengthmaryland.com. Thanks for listening and have a great week.